Today we will be showing you how to replace a control module chassis in an HP MSL 6480 tape library. This replacement will require downtime and should be scheduled with the system administrator. Prior to performing this replacement procedure, you need to log in to the web GUI of the library if possible and save your configuration. If you cannot save your configuration or obtain the unique parameters through the web GUI or operator panel, you will need to set up the replacement chassis from scratch. Additionally, you need to check in the web GUI to see if your library has any licensed features on it. If you find that your chassis has licensed features, you need to stop immediately and open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Licensed features are not transferable from one chassis to another, so if you attempt to replace a licensed control unit chassis with one that does not have the exact same licensing installed, it will not work in your production environment. Once you have verified that downtime is ready, you will first need to power off the library. To do this, push and hold the power button on the front panel for approximately 5 seconds. Then you can let the power button go and you should see a pop-up on the screen asking if you want to put the robot in the parked position or prepare it for shipment. You will hit the selection for parked position and the library will put the robot into the control module and then power itself off. At this point, before going any further, you will need to look through the front window of the control module and verify that the robot is parked correctly there. If it is not, power the library back on and wait for it to initialize. Then log into the web GUI of the library and go under Maintenance and then Move Robotics to Base Module. This will put the robot in the control module correctly and then you can power the library back off. If this fails and the robot cannot move to the control module correctly, stop here and open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Once you have verified that the robot is in the base control module and the library is powered off, you will need to move to the rear of the library. You will start by undoing the power cables going to the power supplies in the control module, along with the Ethernet and host data cables. Please ensure that you label the host data cables so that they can be reinstalled correctly later. Then you will need to remove all tape drives from the control module. To do this, undo the two thumb screws holding each drive in and then pull each drive out and set it to the side. Now, if you have any expansions above or below the control module, you will need to undo the interconnect cables that will be located at the top and bottom of the control module's control card, connecting them to the expansions. Then, you will also need to undo the thumb screws on the alignment mechanisms of both the control module and the expansion directly above it if it is present, and move the alignment mechanism from the locked to the unlocked position and then retighten the thumb screws. Now, move back around to the front of the library and undo the two thumb screws that secure the control module to the rack. You should now be able to carefully slide the control module out of the rack to its fully extended and locked position on the rack mount rails. Then you can carefully unlock the rails and pull the control module chassis completely free of the rails and set it to the side. You are now ready to install the replacement. First, you will need to note if the faulty chassis had the top and bottom cover plates installed. If it did not, you will need to remove those cover plates from the replacement before installing it in the rack. Any replacement control unit chassis purchased from the Rocket Platform website will have both the top and bottom cover plates already installed on it. If you have expansions above and or below your control unit, these cover plates will not be needed. Once you have verified that the cover plates on the replacement chassis match the faulty chassis, you can carefully line up the replacement with the rack mount rails and push it in slowly until the rails are secure on the rail chassis. Then you can push the chassis all the way into the rack and tighten down the front thumb screws to ensure that it is secured in place and then move to the rear of the library. Now if you have expansions above or below the library, you will first need to engage the alignment mechanisms on the control module to the expansion below it, and also the expansion above the control module if it is present into the control module. If your alignment pins are not sitting in correctly, you will need to return to the front of the library, loosen the thumb screws on the front of the control module and any expansions you are trying to connect to it, and then return to the rear of the library. Adjust the control modules until the alignment pins are able to drop in place. Then, you can retighten all the front thumb screws. Now you will need to reconnect all interconnect cables you removed earlier between the control modules and any expansions installed. After these are all connected, you will need to reinstall all tape drives into the control unit chassis. 
To do this, line up each drive carefully with the guide rails in the empty drive bay. Push the drive in firmly until it is fully seated and tighten down both thumb screws to secure the drive in place. Do this for every drive until they are all installed. Then you can install all data, ethernet, and power cables into the rear of the control unit chassis. Return to the front of the library and hit the power button once to power the library on. The library will now go through its initialization process. You should see the robotics moving around inside the library. You will also be presented with an initial setup wizard. Please set the parameters in this wizard according to the parameters you obtained from the faulty chassis before you uninstalled it. If you have a saved configuration file from your faulty chassis, you only need to set the network information through this wizard, and then you will be able to log in to the WebGUI and restore the full configuration. Once you have a login prompt on the front panel, the initialization is complete. Log into the front panel or the WebGUI and ensure that there are no trouble tickets and the library is at a ready status. Now you will need to reconfigure your backup software to see the replacement chassis. For our purposes, since we use Semantic Backup Exec, we simply need to restart the software services so that the tape services can detect the replacement chassis. Your software procedure may be different. Any questions about backup software should be directed to your software support or manufacturer. If you are having any issues with replacing the chassis, or after replacing the chassis you are still having errors, please open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Thanks for watching. This has been another video by the Top 10 USA video production team. We look forward to sharing more content with you going forward, so please check out our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you get notified whenever we release a new piece of content.